Today we're at Ketzenberg Hayes Farms and we're looking at a swine operation. Today you're gonna to learn about biosecurity, the work that the farmers and ranchers do to keep the pigs safe. And you're gonna learn about how these farmers are raising safe and nutritious pork for you to eat. Let's have a great field trip. Today we're joined with Todd Hayes, the owner and operator at Ketzenberg Hayes Farms. And right now we're here in the farrowing barn, Todd, right? Yes. And first off, I am in quite the interesting outfit today. Why would someone need to change clothes when they walk into a swine barn? Great question, Jennifer. Um, for our farm and most modern farm hog production now, we're really stringent on biosecurity. So when I come, when I sell from the workers come to the farm, we, we take a shower in the barn and then put on farm clothes that will stay at the farm like I have on now. So for visitors for today, I didn't ask you all to do that, but I give you all brand new disposable coveralls. Um, I know you haven't been around any other pigs for over 48 hours. Right. Um, that's one of our regiments that we follow on that. So what, what we're trying to do is keep, keep from bringing diseases into our farm. Um, you know, this past year we've had a big pandemic with COVID and we all talked about masks and hand sanitizers and doing this and this. Well, that's similar to what we've been doing for well over 25 years for the hog farm in production. Yeah. Just trying to keep diseases out. And that pool we use, can use less antibiotics or less vaccines, keeping our animals healthier, um, they do so much better. So, so that's the reason, you know, today you're, you're with the disposal cover off. I think you look great, Dan. Um, and uh, we'll go on to that and, and give it, hopefully give everybody a great tour of what goes on in a, a, a swine farm today. Yeah, and I think the farrowing is, is so interesting because farrowing basically means giving birth and, and this is where the babies are born, is that right? Yes, yes, These, this is where we're gonna in a, in a, have a farrowing crate so the sows are laying down. We've got additional heat in here, heat lamps for the newborn pigs that are being born. Um, the pigs are, are protected from away from sows so they less have to get laid on um, versus when we were doing it naturally outside. A lot of pigs got crushed and laid on a lot because they didn't have that protection. Yeah. So this way they can get away from the sow. The sow has all the food, water that they want, um, all, the, all the things they need. And, and for us, we work with we can, we can pick up the pigs, do things with the pigs in a lot safer way. Um, we don't have to worry about the large sow trying to get too aggressive with any, with any of us. So right. It's a win-win safety for not only them, but us. So this is basically like a, a hospital nursery would be for, for human babies in a way. Yes. This is where they're born and then this is how um, you as the farmer can take care of them and make sure that they're they're safe. Right. Uh, you have special attention to them. It's been sanitized and disinfected before they come in. The animals are washed before they come in. So everything is as clean as we possibly can get it when we go through the birthing process. Great. And we're kind of, we're seeing these sows and, and these babies, but how much does a sow weigh right before she's due to give birth? It, it can vary depending on the age of the sow, but anywhere from, you know, 400 pounds, maybe up to 500 pounds. Uh, some of the sows, some of the largest would be Large. that, maybe, maybe larger than that in some cases, the older ones. Um, but uh, typically they're gonna lay down and have anywhere from 12 to maybe 18 piglets, um, if everything goes well. And how, how much does a piglet weigh when they're first born? An average, average pig is going to weigh about, about three pounds when they're born. And so they're, how fast do they grow? In, in two weeks, what are they going to weigh? These, these pigs that are three pounds today when they're born, in, in, in three weeks they're going to be weighing anywhere from 12 to 15 pounds. So they're, they're growing pretty rapidly. Pretty, yes. Okay. So baby pigs require some special attention and, and some of us don't really understand that. Can you walk through the care that you're going to give a baby pig in the first 48 hours that they're born? Yeah, we're going to we're gonna make sure that they've all gotten up and had colostrum. They got the first milk out of the sow, um, that we have a, a good number of pigs. Sometimes some sows have a lot more pigs than others. So in that first 24 hours, we wait what we call foster. We're going to move Maybe somebody had 18 pigs and somebody's got 10. We may take three or four off the sow that had 18 and put those pigs on the, on the sow that had 10 yeah. to kind of give them up. Because the sow only has uh, so many dinner plates, so many nipples. Yeah. And after 24 hours or 48 hours, those piglets have determined which 
which nipple they're going to suck off of, and that's theirs. They're not going to move around to others like other species would. So that's, that's they, their they spot. They choose their they choose. spot. That's, and that's, that's their spot. They fight a little bit while that first 24 hours determine who they're going to get what. So we talk about the rut of a litter. It's yeah. usually a piglet that ended up on the back, back part of the udder, or, or a nip, a, maybe a mammary gland that's not producing milk as well. Right. So that pig never grows as much as his, as his litter mates. Yeah. So we, we monitor that and make sure we try to keep them even and uh, look at the sow's history and see how many typically have they weaned um, to know how many we can, that we think they can, uh, when we say wean, take them to clear up to 21, 22 days old when the pigs are removed from their mother. So you talk about weaning the, the pigs at 21 days. What makes you know that they're ready to be weaned? Um, that, we just know that that's a good, for our system, when the number of sows that are coming in to, to farrowing versus what uh, what we have in the room. And we know around that 20 to 22 or three days, that's where you get to, to about the maximum growth for the pig um, to the point where they're gonna, the pig's gonna start picking up some other diseases that could possibly. Yeah. They're getting a lot of antibodies from the mother until about that time. So that's a good time to remove them from the sow. We know we can start them on feed on their own and, it, and, it, and they can be very uh, thrive real well. And the, and the sow is still in good condition to move back to breeding. If we want to continue nursing the sows longer, say four or five weeks, they start drawing down, the sow will lose more weight and, and, and it takes them longer to kind of recover yeah. for the next breeding for the next litter. So we, we found our industry is kind of found around that 20 to 24 days. It's typical, it seems like the sweet spot. Um, they can be weaned earlier if need be, um, or you can go longer, but that's kind of where, where most of us kind of, kind of fell into that area there in that 20 to 24 days. After they're weaned, what do they start eating? What, what kind of feed are you feeding? You know, they're they're going to get um, a high, really high nutritious feed that's a pellet or formula that's got a lot of, a lot of whey in it, a lot of milk products and sugars, so a lot of fat, similar to what the milk would be from the sow, because yeah. the pig's, the pig's stomach has got to get used to just digesting some proteins through, through work for its corn and for the soybean yeah. meal. So it's kind of a phase we go through for four or five days, and then we switch into another diet that's got less of that product and maybe a little bit more corn and soybean a little bit of a plasma in it a little fish meal um, we have a nutritionist that we work with that's tweaking formulas all the time and making change recommended changes to us so yeah. um, from the time the pig is weaned and started on feed to the time we market them at you know 280 or 300 pounds they're going to probably have about 10 different diets that they want to eat um, truly they eat better more nutritious than I do yeah. uh, because we're giving them exactly what they need and making sure based on their body weight uh, what they need at their age. Yeah. So regardless of their stages, you're making sure and your nutritionist is making sure that they're getting um, enough calories, enough protein, enough vitamins and minerals to, to grow into healthy pigs. Yes. Yeah. yeah well, Brett, that's one of the most, one of the important things we do other than the biosecurity is making sure the feed is right, that it's fresh and that it's balanced balanced diets what the pig needs at the growth stage. Yeah. Um, what what kind of special care goes into a newborn piglet? Well we, we want to make sure that, that as, as a being born we try to if we can we try to dry them off if we're here. Yeah. Um, see that they're getting up to the nipple. Um, sometimes you have pigs that are born that aren't moving or breathing real good so you kind of you kind of rub them with a towel kind of get them dried off and that yeah. helps get their blood flow a little bit, get them to breathing and oxygen, that, that doesn't have a lot. Sometimes you have a sow that may have three or four pigs at the same time, you know, instantaneous. Yeah. So you got, there's a little more work there, get them all spread out and warmed up under the lights, um, depending on what's going on. Um, but just making sure that they're getting around there and not staying up here by the sow's mouth because there's nothing for them to eat up there. Yeah. Um, and then they get cold. And once, if they get chilled, it's harder for them to get going. You know? So it's get them warmed up quick. And uh, but most of the time, they naturally want to go get up and move around pretty quickly after they're born and find that nipple to get started with some, with some colostrum with the milk. Yeah. And that year really gets them going that way. But uh, sometimes we hit this system to get them up to a nipple to get a little milk in them to kind of get them going. And that, uh, that's just all part of it. Yeah. So 
Something interesting about pigs is that we actually give um, pigs an iron shot. Can you explain why we give them supplemental iron? Yeah, pig, when pigs are born, they're they are deficient in iron, and they uh, they don't the sow doesn't produce enough iron in her milk. So we give the piglets a small amount of iron, injectable iron, at, at day one, so they won't be anemic. Um, once they get to eating the feed, there's enough iron in their in the feed in those diets that they get enough to iron that way. Um, but but indoors or the facilities we have, they're not going to get any iron in the other way. So it's an easy way to give them. Give them that iron, give them a little boost. Um, sometimes we may put an antibiotic in there with them to help that first three or four days that they don't get an infection through their navel cord or something else. Right. Um, so that's a good way of doing that. It's, it's not very evasive at all. The pig, piglets don't even know what's going on. And uh, in a couple of minutes, you can do 10 or 12 pigs and move on to do some others. And it's a, it's a, it's a great way of uh, taking care of what they need. And uh, the industry's developed that over the years. And, whether we did it 40 years ago um, at three or four days of age, we're going to do it at day one. Um, it's a lot easier and not less evasive. And it gets them kind of on their way so that they can um, yes. grow and, and be healthy. Yes. How many, so we're seeing in the, the parody barn, but how many sows do you guys have um, in this room at a time? Our, our fairy rooms uh, consist of 24 crates to a room, and there's four rooms. So we're, uh, we're going to fill a room. Uh, we'll we'll fill at least 24 to 30 a week. Um, so yeah, they we have typically twice a week weaning. So primarily you have a lot of fairlings going on in a two or three day window, a couple different times during the week. But it's not uncommon to have a litter of pigs born every day. Yeah. Um, we kind of let them go naturally. And a sow is going to gestate uh, about 100, 14, 115 days before they give birth. So it's 114, 115 days. That's about three months, three weeks, and three days. Yeah, that's exactly right. That right. The old rule of thumb for sows or pigs is three months, three weeks, and three days from the time they're bred till they give birth. So uh, we, we kind of track everything by days. So, so yeah, they're 115 days. Um, then we're going to let them nurse on the sow for 20 to 24 days and we'll pull them off. Within five to seven days after a sow's wean, they should cycle where we can breed them back. Um, we do everything artificial insemination on our farm. And then, uh, then about every 150 days, the sow should have a litter of pigs in the feral intervals. Yeah. So you mentioned artificial insemination. And here in Missouri, a lot of farmers <coughs> use AI because it's um, just an easier way to make sure that you're getting superior genetics. Yeah. Is that why you choose, or do you choose to do AI? For that that's that is a good point. That's one of the main reasons we do AI, and another thing is just for safety aspect. Yeah. For myself, for the other workers, it's easier. We don't have all the boars on our farm that we used to have. Um, boars get tend to get uh, kind of aggressive at times yeah. kind of during the mating process, so this is a lot safer for everybody, and we can, like you said, improve our genetics a lot quicker rather than buying a boar and keeping it for a couple of years. If we have to buy their own few boars, then all of a sudden our pigs aren't going to be very good pigs for several years. Yeah. If we're buying it through a artificial insemination, we're getting semens from a boar stud and we're turning those over quite often. We have the best of the, of the best, hopefully, what we're getting. Um, what's your average age of sow, or, or kind of how old are you looking to, to breed them, and for how long are you going to breed these sows? We're going to breed a, a young female at about 210, 220 days of age, um, so you know, a little less than a year. Yeah. And we'll keep them for, on average, about five to six, six litters, what we call six parodies. So that could be about two, two and a half years, uh, depending on on this, their, their, their body condition, how they're getting along, their history. If they're doing a tremendous job and aren't real big, we may breed them. They may have seven litters or possibly eight. But if it's a sow that's gotten too big, um, had uh, maybe got a lameness in a leg or something, for those reasons, we want to keep them around and we not, we'll, we'll, we'll move them out. Uh, but typically, we can get you know five or six litters, and they kind of hit their peak um, at that three, four, and five is when they do their very best. Yeah. 
I'm, I'm looking around and all of these sows look pretty similar. So I'm assuming that they're all the same breed. Can you tell me what breed that these pigs are and, and why you choose that breed? They're primarily, a, they're a white, as you can see a white animal. So it's got a lot of York, a little land race, um, some, some Duroc in them that's been bred. The color's kind of been yeah. bred out of them, but it's a commercial animals that we purchase. Um, and then we'll breed them with, uh, with a terminal suck. So we don't keep, we don't raise any of our own gills, keep any of our pigs for our own for replacement gills. Okay. Um, so they're all what we call terminal pigs. So they're all for, for meat pigs. Um, so that gives us a lot of product, more productivity that way. Um, but the sows are very docile. Um, they've kind of got used to people being in here. I mean, we're standing here today and we, they're not jumping up and down. They aren't squealing. Um, they're used to that. And that's, that's part of change over the period of time but in the, in the genetics and the environment and just knowing having people that care about the animals that work here with us you know, they love pigs they don't get aggressive they take take their time and the sows pigs pick up on that yeah. you know if you get a worker or two or people that get too aggressive well then the sows get nervous and then things don't go right and it just continues on but if they it's kind of like your pets at home with a dog or a cat if you're always nice to them and play well with them, they're great. But if you got somebody that torments them, then they get a little aggressive. Yeah. So, so we, we we take a big lot of pride in that, and, and we're very fortunate to have people who help work here that, that have a passion for the animals, and that's very important. To have. You talk about um, the the people that work here, and this farm is is a multi generational farm. Can you kind of talk us through uh, the process of of what you went through to, to land here and, and to farm, but also what it means to have your your son farming with you and your grandkids involved and, and just have that legacy that you have here. Yeah, my wife and I have both had opportunity to grow up on, on family farms and pig production and cattle and, and crops. And uh, I'm very proud to you know, be able to be a fifth generation of, to be able to raise pigs uh, and crop and having our son his wife involved in it, our daughter soon to be involved in it if they'd like, and our grandkids. You know, it's, don't think about it, I guess, but as, as it's got developed into that, I think a lot of pride in that, but it's been a, I think about, you know, my great grandfather, my father, you know, all the people before me, what they did and how they worked on this to keep the farm going, to allow us an opportunity to have a, grow up with it, to have a passion for it. Um, but as I got involved in the operation with my wife's family in the, in the late 80s, uh, we went from outdoor sow lots um, to, to indoor, getting everything indoors in, in 94. We just saw you know, the efficiencies improve, productivity improved, um, so many things went with being indoors. But uh, I'm very proud that, that the kids want to be involved in it, and it's fun seeing the grandkids uh, you know, want to play with some pigs. And, have fun with them like kids yeah. like kids do and uh, gives them an opportunity to learn some things that, that you can't learn any other way just being here and being a part of it. You, you've mentioned a few times how the industry has evolved over the years. Can you kind of walk us through um, why that evolution is important and why as an industry we're always pushing forward? I think it's, it's farmers, and by nature, we want to do better this year than we did last year. Find yeah. a way to improve. Um, over the years, um, we've learned that we could put up facilities to get our pigs indoors so we can control the environment. So today it's been raining and it's blowing, it's cold and miserable outside. These animals don't know that. You know, they're, they're cared for. When it was snowing and 20 degrees or zero this winter, the pigs didn't know it. It's 75 degrees in here. You know, we can cool, keep the rooms cooler in the summer. They don't get as they don't get as hot as they would the outside. So it takes less feed, less water, some things that help us be more sustainable. And we're always looking for that next thing we can do. You know, whether it's a process to how we to raise the pig or if it's an equipment change or what we can do differently that we can afford to do that's cost effective, then it has to make sense for the pig too. It's better, help give us better care for them. So um, all those things keep evolving. And I think in anything, we have to keep changing as we as we move forward. Um, 
you know, my dad and uncle farmed for his partners for many years. My uncle would always say, if we're average, boys, we're behind. We got to always be above average to keep moving things forward. And, and I was fortunate to grow up in a family operation that for five generations or more now, that's how they all thought. From feeding pigs out on the ground to buying a self feeder, putting feed in in 1910, and neighbors talked my great grandfather for doing it, thinking he was lazy, but he was seeing the savings in the feed that wasn't in the mud, the pigs were using. So that, that's a basic thing. Now we're going to think about that. So now we're looking, okay, can we design a feeder different so it's easier to eat or to get more intake or water? What does that need to be so we're not wasting water and all those things? So we're just looking at things, different environments, you know, we're moving the air right, we're providing the right quality, kind of heat or light. So technology, innovation, industry, uh, you know, we look for those people to come up with those things. And sometimes we'll maybe think of something on our own or our own farm. Yeah. But it's, it comes down to how can we get the best care for our animals and uh, get the job done and hopefully we keep doing as we move forward. I don't know what the future holds, what changes will be made, but I just know there's going to be changes. So we have to be ready to embrace that and, and try to adapt to it. As a, as a farmer of, of animals, what do you want consumers to know about what you do and, and about these pigs? Well, first and foremost, any, anybody that raises pigs or raises livestock loves their animals, loves what they do, and, they, and their, their primary intention is going to be to cure the animal. You know, whether for me it's, you know, it's, it's long days or maybe, you know, you have weekends or you spend the time with them. Maybe 2 o'clock in the morning you get an indicator the furnace is not working, you get up and get out of bed and go fix a furnace to make sure your animals are cured for them. Um, you know, we're giving them all the care. We try to keep them healthy. We minimize the amount of antibiotics we use. If we can keep the disease out of the barns, um, use vaccines when needed based on what strains or things we've got going on. Um, we monitor very strictly what feeds are going into the pigs and, and any antibiotics we use. There's a withdrawal time, meaning, you know, we can't use this product from this day forward. You know, we know from, from some point you can't be in the pig system. So there's no, when we're talking about antibiotic free meat or see no antibiotic in the, in the meat case, there's no meat in America so it's got antibiotic in it. Uh, there's some meat, some animals that have had, never had an antibiotic given to them, but there's pigs like us, we'll give them some antibiotic when need be. But by the time there's no residue, the meat and that's monitored at the facilities where we send our animals we're doing mock checks of that doing tissue samples so we self-police ourselves i want consumers know that hey, we're here providing a safe product a wholesome product um, we've changed the genetics over the years to get, meet more the consumer demand on more leanness a healthier product um, so we, through genetics through feeding different feed rations and what we're doing I think we're meeting that, that goal, um, but yeah, we love what we're doing and we'll uh, continue to do this and provide, make sure there's plenty of meat in the meat case, whatever type of meat those, those consumers want. Yeah. If they want um, something that's raised outdoors in pasture, there's that choice. If they want something else, there's choices. So consumers know, don't, don't limit us on what, how we can raise it. Let us all find our own way of raising our animals that meets the standards of today for USDA, but also meets the needs of consumers because all the consumers have different needs. Yeah. So let us do our thing so they can provide for them. So now we're joined with Donnie, who is um, the sixth generation on this farm. And obviously you guys look a lot alike, so we know your father and son, um, but your title would sort of be farm manager, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So can you kind of talk us through what the day-to-day -day responsibilities is of taking care of the sows and the piglets and the gilts and, and what that looks like day-to-day -day and kind of what your role is here? Uh, every day I, I check feed bins to make sure we got enough feed. Uh, if I need to order some feed, I call in to the co-op and they, they bring us out some feed. Uh, I come in here, I talk with my guys 
and maybe see what we got going on for the day. Uh, usually I know what's going on most of the day, but uh, if there's anything extra we got, anything that's kind of broken, needs to be fixed, I kind of help them fix it or, or, they, or something's wrong. So um, I take care of breeding, um, do a little bit of weaning sometimes, uh, give, treating, treating pigs with med medicine if they're sick. Uh, just, I kind of, the jack of all trades, kind of do a little bit of everything. So we've we've seen the, the baby pigs and um, the older pigs, and, and now we're in the, the breeding barn here with the sows. What is your favorite stage of the pigs, and, and kind of why do you like that that job so much? Um, breeding's pretty easy to do. Uh, some days it could take a while, but uh, I'd say my favorite part would be uh, uh, helping with the farrowing, with uh, taking care of the little pigs, getting them going, make sure they're helping them stay alive or, or, or saving some pigs and some mamas, so uh, it makes it feel good. Uh, and it makes me feel like I, I, I saved that pig, saved two lives, I saved the pigless life and the mom's life. So you uh, obviously like went off to college and you, you decided to come back and, and to raise your family and your kids um, on the farm, but can you tell us why you chose to come back here and why it's important to raise your family back on this farm? I, I saw the passion that my grandpa had for it, my dad has for it, and they've, I've, I feel like I've gotten some of that passion. And I'm, I'm very passionate about what I do because uh, I love going to the grocery store. It makes my day, no matter how bad of a day it was, go to the grocery store, see somebody pick up a pack of bacon or ham or pork chop and putting them, then putting that in a cart. I know, I feel like I, I, that could have been my pig that I raised. That, and I know it makes me feel better about, it's very cliche, but uh, I fed somebody that day. You're a part of the food chain and you're helping put food on people's plates yeah. here in your community. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for having us out. Um, and we are going to go look at some market pigs now. Now we are in the finishing barn and this is where the pigs stay until it's time to go to market. Yeah, the pigs will be here approximately three months uh, eating, eating a corn soy diet. And then we'll, we'll send them off the market. But uh, for our farm, we also have corn and soybeans. We'll raise uh, all the corn we need for our own pigs. And then with the uh, manure that's under, under the barn, in the lagoons, we'll apply that on the farm fields um, in the fall or early spring. Um, and that'll be the, our nutrients for our crops. So therefore we use very little commercial fertilizer. So it helps, we're really pretty sustainable in that aspect of growing corn, run through the pigs, treats manure, which creates nutrients for crops. We do it all over again. So you're able to kind of utilize the resources from the pigs in the field and then the the resources from the field and, and bring back to the pigs. Right. They kind of just this nice big circle of resources. Right. You know, we're doing a vigorous field soil testing, doing nutrient have a nutrient management plan so we know how much manure we can apply to any field based on history, based on crop removal. Uh, so we follow some pretty good pretty good guidelines. Um, and how we do all that. And we wouldn't be able to do that 40 or 50 years ago while all the pigs were outside because you, you didn't have a way to contain the manure. Now we can actually utilize the manure for our cropping production. So we're seeing these pigs and, and they're, they're fairly big. Can you kind of tell us one, how old they are? And two, um, how much approximately do they weigh? These pigs are probably about five months old and they're probably weighing about anywhere from 220 to 250 pounds and uh, we'll keep them in here probably start moving some of these out here in about two weeks because they'll be close to that 280 to 300 pounds is the typical weight we're going to be so these pigs are going to go to market um is there a preference in female or male pigs to go to market or does it not matter it doesn't matter to today what it used to the the, the gilts Young, the, the females and the males grow about the same rate as what they used, compared to what they used to, um, but they're all relatively lean, um, high muscle content, um, and, uh, kind of what the consumers are wanting. Yep. Uh, meat quality wise, so 
that's what we're doing. So, uh, for example, if somebody that doesn't understand where their meat comes from, the different cuts they like from a pig. A person who likes pork chops for your pork loin, that's, that's this area right here. And pork steak or pulled pork is typically come out of the shoulder area where you have the ham uh, for ham steak. Yep. And the people just love bacon. That's in this area below the ribs, down along the belly, the lower part. And that's where you get your the cuts for, for bacon. So if I'm in the grocery store, I can buy what we call a pork butt, and I can put it in my crock pot or on my smoker, and it makes great pulled pork. Right. But that doesn't come from the, the butt of the pig, right? It comes from what body part? It comes from the shoulder. So some would call it the, the Boston butt or shoulder butt. The terminology, I'm not a butcher, <laughs> so I don't know why, you know, in that aspect. But yeah, the, the pork pork, uh, pork, pork butt is going to be the shoulder cuts in the meat. So from, from conception or from the time you breed a pig to the birth and then all the way to market, um, you guys are really making sure that you are providing delicious lean meat for consumers. Yeah, that, that's the end goal, is make sure we're providing a safe, wholesome product for the consumer to, to feed as many people as we can with that. And, uh, this is, we've kind of seen an aspect of how we raise pigs, a lot of modern hog production yeah. with, with indoor facilities. Um, but the same for me, similar things are done if people want to grow the pigs outside and market it a different way. I'm all for that too. Our family's chosen to go this avenue. Uh, we get better feed conversions, takes less corn, less water. Um, animals are typically healthier, and we don't have the predators and other elements to deal with. But I don't, I don't have any issues at all with somebody wants to grow pigs outdoors or another way. Uh, it's just, it's all we can do. Farmers get a choice, and so do consumers on, on what they want to buy or, or what their choices are in the grocery store. What is your favorite cut of pork that you like to have at home? You know, I like lots of different things, but uh, of course, you got to love bacon. Yeah. We all love bacon. Uh, but a good pork chop, you know, smoked pork loin is always very good. It's very easy, it's very nutritious, yeah. and uh, feeds a lot of people. So, you know, I find that way. But, you know, I grew up, grew up raising pigs and eating pigs that we raised like we still do today. Uh, so it's just different facets. The good old pork burgers even great in the summertime too. So yeah. uh, we eat a lot of those around our house. Great. Don, thanks for uh, being here with us in the pig barn for showing us kind of a modern day swine operation and what it looks like. And on behalf of Missouri Farm Bureau and consumers, thank you for being a farmer and for producing safe and uh, nutritious food for all of us to have. You're truly welcome. I appreciate you all taking time to be here and I hope People viewing this get a good sense of what big production is on our farm today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.